What's up guys, Shane here Figure Deck 3D Printing, and today we're going to work on the Monoprice Select Mini. Welcome back guys, I said today we're going to work on the Monoprice Select Mini. It's been a good workhorse for about 10 months now for me. But there are some things that I want to change on it, and I'm also having some issues with the extruder. I think I finally screwed up the PTFE lining that is in the throat. I could buy a new one, but I've been wanting to install an E3D uh, V6 on there for a while. So I have all the parts here printed out. Let's go over all the parts for that, and then all the other little things I'm going to be doing on this. This isn't all the mods I'm going to do, but this is a good portion of them. Okay, see, so we have a whole bunch of parts here and we're just gonna go through different parts just so you guys can know what they are. Now this here is a new spool holder that clips on to the back side of the printer. It just slips in there and then there's a little pin here that slides in to hold that. It's friction fit and it's weighted down. And then you can use the arm that it comes with right here, but for larger spools, like standard size spools, they're too close. So I have these little modifications that end up just pressing right into these and then it brings it out an extra, well, I don't know, almost an inch. And that way larger spools can clear the side of the printer. So that's that part there. Uh, right here I have a new extruder housing. So this I'm probably going to use, I haven't fully decided yet, but this is just stronger. You should always have these printed out because the default part that comes with the printer can sometimes be a little bit uh, weak and people have snapped that. So I have I've always had this printed out just to have it for extra, but I think I wanna go ahead and do this because then with this you should be able to be print flexible because you can get your uh, PTFE tubing way up in here where the gear is gonna be and that way there won't be any uh, pinching or anything like that inside of there. Another simple mod right here is this goes right on the extruder. So this would go here and this goes like this here mounted to it. Uh, there's two holes already in the printer for that. And it's just a little piece of sponge in there. It's just to make sure your filament stays clean, especially if you have your printer like a workshop or something, you'll wanna have that. This right here is just a simple GoPro mount for the front. This is how I do all my time lapses. This was a new one that I printed to match all the yellow that I'm gonna use on the printer. So like again, I've been using this for a long time. This is a great mod uh, if you wanna get time lapses with your printer. All right, and next here I have a X carriage the support system here all set up. So this plate uh, comes like this, but I ended up modifying it and adding this on. And this is so I can add lighting, which will go to the uh, printer so that you can actually see what you're doing. And the, uh, so this is a six millimeter rod, slides down in here, gets two bolts. These are two LM6 UU, LMMU 66s. I don't know, these are longer ones basically. And they will get zip tied to this. And then this bracket here will get mounted to the X carriage and that way it adds a bit of stability and you don't have any sagging when you get to the extremes of your X. Uh, and it just uses uh, 20 millimeter uh, screws to hold in here and then all of these screws on here are all the stock ones that come on the printer. So that should be really easy. And then here we have all of the extruder parts and there are a few little extra pieces here. So actually I have support in there so I need to take out. Uh, so this is the new carriage. That will go on, the hot end goes in, clips into there like so. The front of the hot end gets screwed on here like so. And then this here is the part cooling fan which snaps on and off. So if you end up doing like ABS, you can take this off. And if I, uh, once I align this properly, uh, it's right there on the nozzle. So you get great cooling right below the nozzle, right on the print where it should be. So I'm super excited about getting this installed. I think this will be a great, great benefit to what it is right now. And then on the X carriage, the idler bearing down there is a smooth plastic one. Well, this is a 16 tooth pulley to replace that. And this here is a guide that goes around it. So the pulley goes like this and this goes around it and basically keeps it from rattling. Uh, the old one rattles a bit. This one is just to prevent all that from happening. And then these are part of the tensioners that go inside that hot end or in the back here. It helps tension the belt so you don't have to have that spring in there anymore because the spring is bad. And then here we have the new fan that will go right here on the front and I'll be using the stock one to put on right there. These are just two 30 millimeter fans. That's all it takes. So let's get the printer broken down and get this stuff started. So here I went ahead, installed this bottom bracket, put the smooth rod in, you got six millimeter smooth rod. I believe it's 300 millimeters uh, long, 
top to bottom, and then I have the two bearings in here. Now all we have to do is zip tie them on, which should be fairly easy to do. Just need to feel all the zips through and then zip them on. It was a little bit hard to get it on. Um, the screws that come with it, you're supposed to use them. It's a bit tight, so you just need to kind of bear with it there. I thought I was gonna go ahead and do the extruder, but you know what, today I'm not. I'm gonna, I retightened everything up on it. I'm gonna see if I can still get it working, see if this helps out at all with some of my problems, and then go from there. as tight as they can go without breaking them. Now this piece right here is different from the stock, uh, well the, the one modified part of this, I had this on simply because this actually links on to a chain, not a chain, but a ball chain here. This looks on here like so and this is with uh, Pet G. Make sure it's nice and strong and it'll actually hold and it's a LED bar. So that way when I do my time lapses, I have constant light all the time. And then there's a hole in it. I'll just drill through this side panel and my wiring will run down through all of this. I'll just have to do that another day. But uh, for today at least, I want to see if I was able to fix my under extrusion problem because this thing clogs up a lot. And I think it was just because this was really, I should show you here. Uh, I think it was because this was really loose. There is this little nut right here that has a set screw in it. Uh, I tightened that up all the way into this. Now this doesn't move at all, so we'll see if that helps out or not. A couple of other things we're gonna add on again. They're super quick and easy, mostly cosmetic. Oh, I did forget, where's my new, I have a new button for here. There we go, new knob. It's bigger because the other one is tiny and sucks. So, uh, and these makes it a little bit easier to click because everyone knows that the Select Mini is a little hard to click the buttons. So this has, gives you a little bit more to actually grab onto and make sure you're making, you can feel each of the clicks as you're making your selection. Because I've printed the wrong item like 500 times. So, so for the uh, GoPro mount, you just have to loosen up these front two screws. And there is a notch right here in the back that lines up with where the belt goes. Sometimes you have to take these all the way out in order to get it because they have a washer and a lock washer on them. So it's a little bit like springed, but it's okay because it's it's just the ends of the smooth rods that you're screwing these into. And tighten it down. Don't lay this too down. Too, don't tighten this down too much, I should say, because it is only PLA, but that is not going anywhere. My whole camera's shaking now. All right, now that part's done. Now the spool holder is super duper simple. All right, so this is where the stock spool holder hooks onto. Well, the new one, actually, that's what holds this on. So one side slides in, other side slides in, and it's held up by that. You have the pin, which just pushes right through there, and now this isn't going anywhere. I'm shaking my whole camera again. It can go up, but it can't go down anymore. And then there are these extra pieces here, which just snap on to the other ones. So this one is this side here and it just pushes in <clears throat> it's a friction fit and it's tight so and that's what that one looks like okay so it's on there and now we have the bar and the bar just sits down like so into the top like so it gets a little bit easier once you use it for a while and then it just twists to lock in so now this does not come off at all, and your spool is very secure on there, and it's a nice straight line right, right into your extruder, which is a lot better than having the spool sideways and having it go this weird way into here. This is much, much better. All right, and finally, we're gonna go ahead and redo this extruder. So we're gonna take out the PTFE tubing, and then we just gotta break the nut here the fitting. We're going to reuse these parts, so you got to make sure you keep those. Of course, if I lose it, that's not any good. Oh shoot, where'd it go? Alright, I got it. And then we just got to loosen up the bolts on this. Yeah, this is the world's longest bolt. 
So the spring we're going to reuse, the bolt we're going to reuse, the idler pulley that's inside we're going to reuse. Alright, so now we get our new extruder housing. I'm going to take off that whole plate. Now that will fit on there once we take out this last bolt. The whole motor comes loose. That's awesome. Uh, kind of, kind of not. The catastrophe waiting to happen. <laughs> Oh, okay, it doesn't actually fall down that far. <laughs> I got real afraid there for a second. Here we go. And now we can tighten this down. First one's in. That's the hardest part. I just gotta get the rest of them in. It would also help if I actually put this on the right way. It goes this way. <laughs> goofball. Absolute goofball. There's two out of the three in there. And then we take our arm, our bearing sits in there. And this just sits on top to trap it in. And it doesn't actually fit. How awesome is that? I thought that bearing would fit in there. It's supposed to, I thought. No, not supposed to. You're supposed to put a uh, M3 in there, and that actually holds it on there. Now we can get on. But this is not gripping, so that's concerning me a little bit. Oh, yep, that's gripping. All right, we got to put the extruder arm in there first. Say the extruder uh, spring. Where's that part? That's good. Now we just slip that in there. Take our push fitting, thread it in. Maybe. Oh, there it goes. Now, can this go all the way through? No. So I have a new push fitting here that will allow the PTFE tubing to go all the way through. Right, so this fitting works a little bit, but I'm now stuck on the fitting. We're actually gonna go ahead and get a new piece of tubing just because I kinda jacked this one up a little bit. Gonna make it a hair longer so that we can now put this in. Still see right now. Yeah. Right to there, down into there, and there it is. So now we can rewrap this all together. There it is, like that. All right. Well, that didn't fully go how I was expecting, but that's okay. You know, you live and you learn. You can only do, you can only know so much by watching someone else do it. You know, if you do it yourself, it's a lot of a different process. So I have the new spool holder on here. I have the new extruder on here. I have a new knob, my GoPro mount, 
and this X axis, uh, this X gantry support system. So again, this is to keep it from sagging down on one side, trying to keep it a little more perpendicular to the bed, or I guess parallel to the bed. Either way, it's supposed to make everything much more rigid. It's supposed to. I haven't verified any of this, but I'm going to do a test now, at least to make sure that my extruder works. And if I can verify my extruder works, then you guys should see that and life should be much better than it was before. So, and to go back, I was going to put this on. I could not get this end block off and I did not feel like going online and looking how the people did it before. I wanted to kind of just do this video on some of the mods I wanted to do. So I'm gonna have to go back online and find out how they got this end block off. I think it, the smooth rods are glued in there somehow and it might have to be knocked out with a hammer and I'm afraid to bend anything if I take a hammer to a 3D printer. So I'm not gonna do that right now. But at least this is still an option in the future if I can't get this working properly again. And the last two little optional things you can add, again, I have the dust filter, which mounts on right here. I haven't done that yet. And then I have here a little uh, slot holder. I mean, basically it just holds your Allen wrench. I had it here somewhere. It is now gone. Here it is. So it mounts on there. It can hold your Allen wrench. It can hold a spare USB for you if you want, and it also holds the uh, micro SD to SD card adapters right there, so you can always have extra cards sitting there in case you ever need them. They are up out of the way, so your gantry won't ever hit them, so it's nothing to worry about. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for the mods so far. There's a lot more I wanna do. I think, I'm thinking about switching the LCD around, so putting the LCD here and the switch over there because when this is all the way forward, it's kinda hard to get to the knob. You really shouldn't have to while it's running, but I think it would be a little bit better putting it over there. I wanna put a cable chain on the back here and I wanna run the cables from underneath the bed out of the back of the bed and that way they're not being moved around so much. A lot of people have said their cables have broken. Again, I've been printing with this for pretty much a solid eight or 10 months now and I haven't had that issue yet but I kinda wanna get it done before that becomes an issue. I also wanna replace all the pulleys underneath with actual metal pulleys. They're all plastic, as you saw, that I replaced on the X axis right here. They're a plastic pulley, and I just don't think, I can already see how this is worn a little bit. These just aren't gonna last forever, so I wanted to put an actual pulley in there with a bearing. This just has a piece of, not even PTFE, it's just another piece of plastic in there as the bearing, so I wanted something be a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna do a test print now, we'll see how it works, and you guys should be seeing that on my outro here. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, dislike, let me know down in the comments what I can do better next time. If you wanna support the channel, go ahead down there and subscribe, hit the bell icon, that way you know anytime I upload new content, and then when you see new videos for this series coming out. If you wanna support me financially, down below me, it's gonna be a Patreon link. Go ahead and hit that, don't even dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys wanna support me without spending your money, down in the description, there's gonna be a bunch of affiliate links, update your bookmarks, do your daily shopping with those. I greatly appreciate it. So thanks again for watching guys, and until next time, happy printing.